Good afternoon, all of you. Dear Sir, Professor Madhava Champatilaka, dear Madam Director, Senior Professor Priyani Paranagama, and all the members, academics of Institute of Indigenous Medicine, Kampaha Vikramaraj University of Indigenous Medicine, Siddha Units of Eastern University and Jaffna University. Indigenous Medical Education Unit of Institute of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, is the first medical education unit established for indigenous medicine in Sri Lanka. It is established with the goal of ensuring good administration and sustainability by training existing staff as competent and high caliber individuals in their relevant fields. It plays a major role in staff development, curriculum development, and conducting research related to medical education. With the scope of staff development in the area of conducting research related to medical education, the Indigenous Medical Education Unit of Institute of Indigenous Medicine has organized a webinar series for academics on research in medical education. Today, 12 January 2023, the unit has organized the first webinar of the series. With that note, I would like to invite Madam Director, Senior Professor Priyani Paranagama to welcome the audience. Dear Madam, it is over to you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, organizing this uh, event first. Uh, I really congratulate the medical, Indigenous Medical Education Unit of the Institute of Indigenous Medicine uh, starting this type of uh, uh, webinar series because this is a new uh, uh, item for indigenous medical systems uh, because uh, as very correctly uh, the computer said that uh, you know this is the first uh, indigenous medical education unit established in Sri Lanka uh, so therefore I warmly uh, welcome our resource person today Professor Madhava Chandratilaka he's the chair of the uh, medical education uh, unit in the uh, you know the University of uh, Kalania uh, and also uh, I really uh, appreciate that despite of your busy schedule accepting our invitation and uh, you know the agreeing to uh, deliver uh, or uh, the the deliver uh, uh, you know the speech on research in medical education today and I warmly welcome you Professor Chandra Dilakar and also uh, I welcome all the participants uh, especially participants from Gapha Vikmarachi Indigenous University and also uh, all the academics from uh, Kaitadi uh, Siddha, Siddha unit of the University of Jaffna and also uh, academics from uh, Eastern University of Siddha Unit in the Eastern University of uh, Eastern University and also our uh, academics who joined from uh, in uh, you know Institute of Indigenous Medicine so I have to uh, I think all of this is uh, eye-opener for all of you because uh, you know the, uh, the dearth of evidence uh, you know the in Indigenous Medical Education Unit Therefore, I'm very sure, Professor Chandra Dilaka, uh, this, uh, you know, the webinar uh, will be very beneficial and useful for our academics who are in this, uh, you know, the, in, uh, uh, in the medical education system. We have like three medical, uh, four actually, that is uh, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani and traditional medicine. So they uh, need to, uh, you know, the learn how to do research in uh, indigenous medical education and also establish the indigenous medical education system in Sri Lanka also. Therefore, uh, I, I really uh, you know, welcome you and also uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Madam, for that warm welcome. 
and now it is the time to start the session on research in medical education. Before that, let me introduce the resource person for the session. He is Professor Madhava Chandra Tilaka, who is the chair and professor of medical education, Faculty of Medicine, University of Kalania. He had graduated with Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery from the University of Colombo and awarded with Master's and Doctor of Philosophy in Medical Education from the University of Dundee. He has been involved in course development and evaluation in the field of health professions education in Sri Lanka and overseas for many years. One of his main key areas is staff development. He has engaged in training trainees who have been involved in undergraduate and postgraduate education. He is vastly experienced in quality assurance and accreditation of programs both nationally and internationally. Dear sir, now I would like to warmly welcome you to continue the session. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Professor Priyani, Madam, thank you very much for your introduction. It's very nice that uh, we met actually uh, at least virtually and briefly in this session. And um, thank you very much, Manori, for the invitation. And I, I'm really pleased that uh, I'm uh, able to uh, add something to uh, uh, to your uh, academia about medical education research. I'm sure you might be engaging in, in different types of research in your uh, different fields, but uh, education is something that you can think of. There, there's no much difference between uh, normal the research that you do in your own disciplines and the medical and, and medical and in medical education. But uh, it might be good to reflect on certain opportunities and certain uh, things, uh, special things that we need to consider uh, in doing medical education research. So basically, I will be introducing a uh, few of the uh, important concepts uh, in the initial part of the, the presentation or in the in the webinar, and then we are getting on to uh, a group work, and uh, we are going to learn a little bit more about medical education research through that workshop. So uh, sorry, uh, through, uh, through that uh, activity. So uh, that is how I'm planning to uh, uh, move about in, in this session. And if you have any question, you can always stop me and ask me, or uh, if you need further clarification, you can always uh, stop and ask. So to as a as a preliminary thing, can I ask how many of you, uh, you can use the, the reaction button, raising hand button there, how many of you have uh, engaged in educational research previously? Out of, uh, I think we have about 16 participants. Anyone who has involved in uh, educational research? So if you can use the reaction button and then uh, maybe raising hand would be good. Excellent. So our convener is, uh, has engaged in educational research, which is good. Right. So uh, have you engaged in any other research, maybe in your discipline, maybe uh, related to uh, epidemiology or any other uh, specialization, science-based science research? out of the participants? Yes, sir. Yes. I think uh, most of the academia is uh, qualified in their master's, PhDs, and uh, ah, MDs. Okay. So okay. The, as okay. part of that, they have- uh, They have engaged in that. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's very good. That's very good. Okay, so you have a, a, a good understanding about basics of, of research and you have advanced in uh, the research paradigm as well. So it's going to be uh, easy to ask for me. And uh, let me share my- Can you see the, uh, the presentation? I hope it's visible, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction and the invitation. So basically in this uh, one and a half hour or so, we are going to discuss a few questions that are pertinent to uh, uh, research in medical education. Uh, we try to understand what is medical education and it's uh, it may be a new field especially for uh, indigenous medicine. Uh, it's been uh, there for a while for uh, allopathic medicine, but it's 
and uh, because that is important for us to uh, focus on different aspects of medical education in our research. And then the second question that we are going to uh, discuss is uh, why medical education should be researched. Is, the, is it important? What is the importance? What are the benefits? And uh, what are the opportunities for medical education research? As teachers, what are the opportunities we have? And how, how we get about uh, with medical education research? How do we get about with medical education research? How to start? Uh, what are the things that we have to think about when we when we are uh, about to start? Where to start? From which uh, point that we should start? And then, uh, very importantly, last but not least, uh, some ethical issues that we need to respect in conducting medical education research. So that is the journey we are at and we are start, uh, we are just about to start. So basically, uh, medical education is now called health professions education. It has a broader meaning because it involves, th there are commonalities between uh, different disciplines. Let's say if you think about uh, uh, doctor training, nurse train, and uh, nurses training, and maybe uh, any other health uh, applied uh, allied or applied health uh, professionals training. There are similarities, and there are differences, unique differences as well. However, uh, if you examine the literature, now we are talking about more about uh, health professions education rather, rather than medical education. So, both uh, if you uh, search for both words, you will get uh, research uh, findings and research articles, but Basically, we can go a uh, go a little bit broader in defining medical education. So it's a science which involves course design. Now we offer courses, uh, programs like the undergraduate programs, postgraduate programs, etc. So it's about course designing, development, and evalu uh, evalu uh, evalu uh, evaluation of courses, and it is about teaching, learning, and other other methods of delivery. And it is about assessment. So basically, there are three areas when it comes to uh, health professions education, course design, development and evaluation, teaching and learning and other methods of delivery and assessments. In addition, uh, a combination of these three creates uh, unique environments for teachers as well as students. Uh, there are students. Uh, about so, uh, have an experience. So, teaching experience. But of these three have created more uh, changes in two categories of uh, human beings as well as teachers. So, that has created an environment where uh, we can explore and we can examine. And uh, there are a lot of uh, commonalities between general education principles and medical education as well. However, there are so many unique things that is like medical education emerged because a certain, uh, certain features, certain approaches in general education could not answer specific questions posed by or the challenge by the, the disciplines like medicine, indigenous medicine, uh, nursing professions, so on and so forth. But we need to uh, understand the fact that the general education principles always apply uh, in many of the general education principles always apply when, it, when we talk about medical education. So why medical education is researched? It's a science. When you say science, it's not a hard science or what you call biomedical science only. It has a social science component as well. So it's a combination of biomedical sciences and social sciences. So it's uh, you might argue that teaching is an art, right? So it's what's there to it's a opinion based thing. What is there to uh, to understand as a science? But it's a science. If you examine uh, the literature, there's loads and loads of literature on medical uh, different aspects of medical education. So we are in a position to take evidence based uh, practices. For example, let's say we have. Uh, 50 students in our batch and we have certain outcomes to be delivered. So should we go by opinion of or individual opinion or should we go by uh, evidence? Now evidence might suggest in this particular topic, if you are teaching uh, uh, this particular topic or this kind of topic, then this is the approach you have to take and you have to analyze the students. If students have these, these skills, then that is the best, uh, most effective way of uh, educating this uh, group of students. Therefore, for us to take evidence-based 
practice in our educational intervention, which should be the case, uh, we need to uh, research medical education. Now, in medical education, we are not talking a lot about evidence-based uh, practice because uh, if you go by the definition of evidence-based practice, we will not be able to comply with the, with all these uh, all the all the steps all the criteria. Therefore, in medical education, what we uh, what we go for is best evidence medical education, which means we are using the best evidence to make our educational judgment. But those are minor details. But anyway, what we want to know is medical education need to be researched because we need to take evidence based. Uh, uh, decisions in our educational practice and as you know we observe if you many of you might have children and uh, children uh, your children might have different approach to the world the, how they see the world is different how they want to learn is different how they want to uh, uh, go about uh, studying is different how they want to perceive uh, education is different it's come, it might be completely different to yours. And we know that there are several uh, generations, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth, C, alpha, and all that. So the change of generation is so fast. Now, from changing from X to Y might have taken two or three decades. And one uh, generation might have survived, uh, two generations might have survived in the same way. But the change of generation has changed because the technological advancement, uh, because of the empowerment of people, because of various factors, we observe that there's a transition of generation very fast. So if you do these, uh, the, the needs of this generation, and uh, for example, if we want to uh, try and teach them the way we want, not the way they want, they, not the way they, uh, that is appropriate for them, we are going to be a failure. Our education system is going to be a failure. I mean, I'm not blaming uh, one particular uh, country or uh, ourselves, but if you think about many educational systems in the country, now we were following the, uh, the, the, bi uh, the Victorian model of education. Now, even the Victorian model has been give, uh, given up by, uh, by the UK, but still we, we, we follow it and we have not changed it. Because of that, our, uh, many people question about our school education system these days, the employability of people the attitudes which had not been changed and uh, the, the, the way they uh, look at life and the resilience. We talk about all these things because uh, we have not thought about the generations, the changes in the world. Therefore, we need to research uh, medical education to understand the current status and how best things can be done. And also, uh, you know that uh, the advancement of knowledge is very, very high. Right? As human beings, uh, the, the, uh, the, there is a lot of research that had happened on human learning and how people perceive things, how people process things uh, has, been, uh, has been understood. And we need to incorporate all these things in our educational practices. So because of multiple reasons, we, have, uh, we need to uh, research medical education. Now, one might argue that in the UK or in another uh, European country or in other Asian country, maybe in China and or uh, uh, Indonesia or Malaysia or Russia, it's been researched. So, so we can use the same evidence. But you know that in medical practice, there are a lot of cultural things that might affect uh, the outcome of uh, what we do. And there can be social uh, aspects that can affect what, uh, the outcome. Therefore, even though the certain research had been done in uh, certain countries, we might have to uh, replicate that in our own context. Let's say problem-based learning. That is one of the new concepts, new ways of uh, teaching uh, learning students. Uh, whether it's, it works for, for ourselves, whether it's culturally affected, whether it's socially affected, we need to examine. So we need evidence to say that this is going to be uh, a successful way of teaching in our context. So therefore, we need to have our own evidence. Therefore, doing medical education research is important. Now, what are the opportunities for medical education research? Can you, can you come up with some opportunities? As teachers, do we have opportunities to uh, engage in uh, medical education research? What do you think? Anyone?
who would like to go? What are the opportunities? What do you think? Why do you think uh, it's uh, we can do it? Because uh, we have the uh, we have these these things to uh, facilitate research. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. You are audible. I think feedback collection from students we can use uh, uh, for generating new evidence uh, about uh, how we teach and how they perceive. So something, yes. yeah. Yes. Students are there. So our students are there and we routinely engage in collection of feedback, for example. Right. So, so we can use it uh, for medical yeah. education. Yes. So we can use use it as, as uh, for, for research. Good. Yeah. yeah, so education is our routine practice. We design and develop courses. We teach students, we assess students, we experience, uh, uh, experience teacher life. We also interact with students. So all these are opportunities for us to think about research areas, research topics. Let's say you are going to uh, develop a particular course to enhance the ethical practice of your uh, students. So if you design it as a research project, then you can present it as a research as well. So uh, proper uh, preparation, proper methodologies, proper execution, proper measurement of outcomes. So if you do all these things, even a course design, a simple course design can be uh, a research project. And if you want to evaluate uh, effectiveness of uh, and uh, the effectiveness of a particular course. Let's say you are you, are, you have introduced a computer-based uh, 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 mechanism to teach them procedural skills, uh, certain procedures, and you develop some videos about uh, medicinal plant and plants and has it worked. And if you do it in a, part a particular way, that can be research. So in course designing and development, there are opportunities for you to do research. For te in teaching, you can do. You can change uh, uh, teaching patterns and see whether it's going to be effective. You can compare the previous one with the new one and you can introduce new ways of assessing students. Now you might have heard about uh, objective structured uh, clinical examination, uh, uh, things like that, or uh, workplace based assessments. You might come across, you might have come across all these things. So whether they work in the context of indigenous medical education, uh, is it uh, does it work with uh, um, undergraduates? Does it work with postgraduate? Uh, uh, what do the teachers feel about it? And uh, uh, how uh, how teachers make judgments? So all these things can be uh, a part of your research. Those are things that you routinely do and you can convert all, all these aspects, almost every aspect uh, as a, a research project. And, uh, but you need to think about it. You need to plan uh, plan that research. You have to exe execute it in a proper manner and you have to measure outcomes, et cetera, et cetera. But rather than doing just for the, just for the uh, sake of doing, if you think about these things, it's a routine practice and you can convert them to uh, research. And also you have the opportunities to access material. Let's, let's say you want to examine the marks of uh, uh, students. You have the access and you students are there and they, they, you have easy access to students and you have teachers, colleagues. If you want to re do a, a research among your colleagues, they are there. And there are opportunities to collaborate as well. Let's say uh, two departments again get together and do a research project, two uh, units uh, here in front, the Yunani and uh, Ayurveda can get together and, uh, and, and do a research project in medical education. And you have, you have the opportunities of following up because student courts are, are, are there. So you do uh, an intervention in the first year and you can follow that up till the fourth year or the fifth year. And you can go back as well. Let's say uh, you want to examine how the, uh, perfor the, the performance of students for the last five years are, and you, had, you want to compare two types of examinations and that, that can be done because that data is with you. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to engage in research. You uh, routinely collect data. Uh, you have access to material. There's opportunities, more and more opportunities for you to collaborate because if you are in two different disciplines, you might not be able to collaborate in a science uh, project. But educational project, you can test the same thing in two different uh, uh, disciplines and, and come to consensus and the, the consensus would be valid. Uh, the, the conclusions would be valid. And then you have 
opportunities to go uh, follow up uh, cohorts and go back to uh, already collected data. So because of that, I think medical education is a, is a, has, is an opportunity for you to uh, improve your uh, research profiles. So basically, uh, if you think about uh, how to uh, get about medical education research, uh, that, uh, the research is about a systematic inquiry. We all know that uh, it, it we carry carry it out to describe, explain, predict, and control uh, certain observed uh, phenomena, a particular phenomenon. It involves inductive and deductive methods. So inductive methods, inductive approaches usually look at a particular observation and we try to analyze that observation. So that is primarily done. It is not 100%, but primarily done to qualitative studies. And uh, then we have deductive approaches where we try to verify a certain observed event. Let's say uh, 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 we observe that uh, students, uh, 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 two groups of students uh, score to, uh, uh, in a two different ways, males and females score uh, differently in a particular exam, right? So you want to verify that observation. So my, you might be go for, going for quantitative com comparison, correlational study or uh, whatever. Uh, so a more statistically uh, based study. And also uh, you observe that uh, certain students coming from uh, certain, uh, certain areas perform better and you want to understand that phenomenon. You are not need to analyze that phenomenon. In that case, you might adopt a qualitative study. So basically, uh, research is about systematic approach to solving a problem, basically to find an answer. So in, in that, you can uh, you can look at the observations, you, uh, what you observe in two ways. You might want to uh, analyze uh, an observation all the, uh, which you have observed, or you might want to uh, verify uh, an observation. So basically, uh, you might be conducting qualitative and quantitative studies. Like in, like in all aspects, like in any other aspect that you have involved in research, medical education follow uh, research follow the same. Depending on your research question or hypothesis, you might choose uh, uh, you might choose the methodology that you want. Let's say uh, your research question might be how effective is online learning, and uh, you've been engaging in online learning for the last. Uh, two and a half years, maybe uh, primarily due to COVID uh, uh, pandemic. And you might want to see whether it's an effective way of uh, learning. So you might develop a research question around that, or you might develop a hypothesis. You want to compare uh, classroom uh, based learning versus uh, online learning, what is, what is more effective. So uh, likewise, you might be coming up with uh, research questions and hypothesis. So at this point, I would rather like uh, to go for a, a group task before that, you can always ask questions. So anything that you want to clarify. In the meantime, it's good if you can make me the co-host because I want to break the the, the audience into uh, breakout groups. Okay, yeah, I'm already a co-host. Thank you. Any questions up to now? No? Okay, right. So uh, I'm going to break you into groups, and in each group, what you want, uh, what I expect is to generate your own research question or hypothesis, which is related to education. Right? It's not about uh, comparing two two drugs, two uh, treatment modalities, or anything uh, or, or, or similar, uh, something similar. It's about education. So in education, it might be related to your teaching, learning. It might be related to your course design, whatever. So as a group, you need to develop a research question or a hypothesis and what is the possible uh, methodology that you might be using in research in that area. So uh, any questions about the group task before, you, uh, before I uh, break you into groups? I wonder whether you have decided not to talk during the session or am I not making any sense? <coughs> Sorry. Am I making sense out of it? This yes, or? yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Others, if any questions are there, please. 
Even yeah. you can use the chat box to type. Right. I'll break you into groups. So in the group, you discuss and come up with a research question or hypothesis and a possible uh, way of uh, uh, methodology for that particular, to research that particular research question or hypothesis. Okay.